ratification by Councilor Matthew J. Kelly, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance for the, to the flag. Please stand. Most merciful Father, bring comfort to those in pain, peace to those in distress. Please be with our men in uniform, both home and abroad, and bring them home safely to their families. Help us to make decisions that benefit the entire Fredericksburg community, and remind us that we're here to serve, not be served. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Play thank ball. you. Officer Tiernan, thank you for being with us this evening. We have a, a wonderful presentation. The City of Fredericksburg United Way Benefit Golf Tournament was held on Monday, September 16th. And this is the seventh consecutive year that the city has sponsored a golf tournament to raise funds to be used by the Rappahannock United Way to provide needed services in the region. This year, as a result of the participation and contribution of some 130 golfers, 44 sponsors, and several very dedicated volunteers, many of whom are on our staff, the city is able to present to the Rappahannock United Way a check for the proceeds of the event in the amount of $16,181.35. This brings the total funds raised for the United Way during the seven-year life of the tournament to $93,360.87. Will Mr. Fawcett come forward and the representatives... And the representatives from the United Way. And here we are. I'm not sure the bank's going to take this one, but I got a real one. I got one they will take. There you go. Uh, good evening. I'm Janelle Donahue, president of Rappahannock United Way, and um, very thankful for the big check and the big number and the one I can take to the bank. Um, definitely want to thank uh, Mr. Doug Fawcett, um, who um, leads the charge for a very um, engaging and enthusiastic committee that works very hard. Um, if you never think that uh, you can make a difference, you should be on the City of Fredericksburg's Golf Tournament Committee. They have lots of fun planning it. And they raise lots of money, but like you said, $16,000 raised at this tournament, but in the last seven years to raise almost $100,000, you're impacting the lives of um, thousands of Fredericksburg City residents as we help to provide tax preparation. We do financial coaching. We have the Alice Assistance Fund, among other areas in education, financial stability, and healthy living. You're improving lives, and we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, just very briefly thank uh, the members of the committee, one of whom is here tonight, uh, Chief Allen is on our committee, uh, other members of the city staff, and then we have some other st city staff that comes out on the day of the tournament to volunteer, and uh, it's a cliche, but literally we could not do that with, with, without them, so thanks to all those folks who contributed. Well, we thank you, Doug Fawcett, because he does absolutely, with great enthusiasm, <laughs> and colorful clothes, <laughs> spearheaded and keep it going every year. But thank you, Janelle. You are such a wonderful force in this community. The United Way is in, in so many ways, not just in providing funds to very significant um, organizations, but also in increasing awareness, such as presenting the Alice Report, making it available, making us aware of what we need to be doing in other ways as well. So thank you. We have one public hearing this evening. Um, I will call upon Assistant City Manager Mark Whitley. Um, but first, Madam Clerk, would you read item 5A? 
fiscal year 2020 budget amendment authorizing the appropriation of fiscal year 2019 carryovers and approving additional appropriations for certain capital projects. Thank you, Mr. Whitley. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, I will be brief this evening. Uh, this item was before you on first read on October 8th, and the plan was to have the public hearing and second read tonight. The, uh, unfortunately, uh, in the short time frame and turnaround between the meetings, the ad did run in the online edition of the newspaper, but did not run in the print edition. Uh -huh. um, and due to that error, what we're going to ask council to do is open the hearing tonight, um, but hold the, open, hold the hearing open until the next council meeting, which is November 12th. And the ad has run for that. I checked today. Um, so we'll hold the hearing open to November 12th, and then second read. We would ask council to, read, to have second reading on this amendment at that time. Um, this is our annual carryover um, budget amendment. It goes from fiscal 19 to fiscal 20. Uh, the amount of the amendment is such that it does require a public hearing. Uh, and the details are in your packet, and I'm happy to answer any questions. All right. Are there any questions for Mr. Whitley? This is a public hearing. Is there anyone here who would like to speak to this matter? Well, as Mr. Whitley has explained, this public hearing will be held open until the November 12th meeting. So if between now and then any citizen is, is, would like to speak to it, they may do so at the November 12th meeting. Okay. This, we have one speaker signed up for comments ahead of time, but I do not see her. Is Betty Gray present? All right, then we will go to the council agenda. Does anyone wish to add Dr. Duffy? I promise to be brief. <laughs> <laughs> Parking Advisory Committee. Parking Advisory Committee would be item 7A. Councilor Kelly. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Add smart scale as item B. All right, smart scale will be 7B. Dr. Duffy, oh, um, Councilor Fry? I'll be very brief as well. Um, Mayor Green, uh, slave auction block. Okie dokie, thank you. Um, Councilor Duffy? Thank you, Mayor. Um, we just came from a work session where we talked, uh, met with the uh, Planning Commission and um, they, we went over their annual land use report and you know, reminded us how much we depend on and benefit from their work. But it was also pointed out it would be helpful to have a voice from Planning Commission on the Parking Advisory Committee. And so without objection, what I'd suggest is that we direct staff to come up with a way for doing that at, at a council meeting soon to arrange for an appointment from Planning Commission to that committee. Mm -hmm. Mr. Duffy? I mean, Mr. Birdie. Yes, Madam Mayor, to uh, Dr. Duffy's uh, request, we're happy to take uh, the opportunity to put something to paper and bring it back to Council for Action. Okay, thank you. Councilor Kelly, smart scale. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, last night at the FAMPO board meeting, the Policy Commission discussed shifting our category to which our projects are graded from A to B, which would also affect all the jurisdictional projects that come forward as we apply for smart scale round four. This decision has to be made by the end of November, so it would have to be voted on by the policy board at our next meeting, which is on the 18th. This will result in a significant change in how our projects will be graded under smart scale. Very, the biggest thing is right now under A, which is category A, which we're in now, the big category that we're graded in is for congestion. It's now going to drop significantly, and the bigger one is going to be economic development, and then there's safety and other things. Um, it's that important that it's something that this council should weigh in on, but it's going to have to be quick, and it's going to be, have to be at our next council meeting on the 12th, because we would be voting on it on the 18th of November. So I will get out the presentation that was made to the policy board last night to all council members to give you an opportunity to look it over and chime in. With, this is something, if you've got any questions, to get them to us as quick as you can so we can get answers for you because this is coming back for a vote on the 18th. Just wanted to give you a heads up. Thank you very much. 
Yes, Vice Mayor Withers. Yeah, thank, thank you, Madam Mayor. I just wanted to add that the highway department is recommending that, that we do this. So that's, to me, is a pretty significant uh, recommendation because they know how these things work. So just thought I'd throw that out to you. Thank All right. you. So when the memo comes into your email, pay attention. <laughs> okay. Uh, Council Fry. Thank you, Mayor Greenlaw. Um, the item I added was slave auction block, and I'm just going to touch on it very fast. Um, I think last month I gave an update to the public about the process, and um, there's a lot of confusion, I would say, um, in the city about the process, and I understand that folks don't understand the process because it can be complicated um, from the outside looking in um, of the process. So what I will say is um, for the folks that are thinking um, that it, it, it was over um, at the newspaper article that was printed because a lot of folks didn't understand it. Um, not that it was misprinted, but there's a lot of folks didn't understand the process. And if folks thought that, if anybody thought it was over, even with the ARB, um, I'll, just, I'll just leave it at that. It's, it's, it's not over, and I just wanna say that publicly. Um, and and, I, and, and um, I would just say stay tuned um, to, to the council as a, as a concerned citizen should. Well, uh, this question came up at the NAACP meeting last night, and I uh, reported to them, as, as we said, that, that uh, at our November 12th meeting, there will be three items on the agenda related to the auction block. One will be the certificate of appropriateness, one will be the lease, the proposed lease with the Fredericksburg Area Museum for us to review, and the other will be the final plan for the removal and the moving of the block to the to the museum. So there, that it's on. It, it's definitely moving forward. Um, you know, more or less as scheduled. Uh, Mr. Baridi, correct me if or add anything you need to on that. But just be assured, general public, that there will be three agenda items related to this that will move it move it forward to do as we had planned uh, on the November 12th meeting. Mr. Baridi, you want to add to that? No, Mayor. I think you've, you've captured it properly, I guess. We'll be back uh, with uh, more information on November 12th, just as you stated. Okay. Yeah. And, and thank you for... For, for adding the points on there because um, like I said I just want folks to, to stay engaged um, a lot of people were reaching out to me um, when it, it was a little misleading yeah it was, it was it was a lot going on for the last week or so and a lot of people were ready to come tonight and I was like just wait a minute you know so it's I can understand um, you know the confusion mainly for just not understanding the process so uh, I just want to say that publicly and thank 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 you, and, and, and I said I wasn't going to talk a lot, uh, but I just want the folks to know how much uh, staff uh, has really been doing um, on this. So I'll wait till the 12th uh, um, to discuss it a little bit more, but it's, it's, it's been a lot uh, put into the efforts. It's, it's all moving forward, yes. including the committee to look at the history and, yeah. and you know, yeah, and once this is and, over, I'll be fully engaged yeah. into um, uh, the, the second phase of getting more African American history. So, I'm thinking next February. Black History Month is a month, so I'm, I'm thinking by February we we we'll have some a lot of better reports. So, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you, Council Fry. Madam Mayor, I'll move the consent agenda as submitted. Second. Please cast your votes. It's not working. Oh, we can do it the old-fashioned way. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> Done. Um, Madam Mayor, move the minutes as submitted. Second. Any discussion? Please cast your votes. Aye. 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 All in favor, say aye. We better raise a hand so we make sure. <laughs> Tanya can count, make sure everyone's accounted for. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. We have an appointment to the Planning Commission. Madam Mayor, will you poll the council? Oh, that's it's actually, we have, a candidate, we have a member of the Planning Commission who's eligible for a second term, and we have an application um, from um, um, a, 
uh, pending for um, that position as well. So we have two candidates, if you will, for, I just for get the one point. position. You ready, Madam Clerk? Yes. Councilor Graham. Matt Rowe. Councilor Duffy. O'Toole. Councilor Devine. Thomas O'Toole. Councilor Kelly. Thomas O'Toole. Councilor Fry. Rowe. Vice Mayor Withers. Uh, Thomas O'Toole. Mayor Greenlaw. Mr. O'Toole. There are, go ahead. Mr. O'Toole with uh, five. Alrighty. Now, what will be the next round of, of um, openings on the Planning Commission? It won't be until next year. This next time. year, at this time. Mm -hmm. Do you know whether it be more than one? I think it is. I I'm think it's sorry. three. I'm, I think it's three also. I'm sorry. I meant to ask you before the meeting so we could look three. that up. But I believe there will be several. Mr. Rowe is an excellent candidate, and I hope that he will keep his application current. Our clerk keeps applications on file and generally contacts those people to see if they still wish to be considered. So, but thank you very much for your application. City manager's agenda. We have item um, 11A is a first read supplementing resources for public works, social services, stormwater management, and information technology. I think we've been working the staff. A little bit. <laughs> um, Mr. Whitley? Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you. Uh, good evening, Honorable Mayor and members of Council. The item you have before you tonight is a resolution on first reading, which would amend the budget uh, to add resources to the Information Technology Department and also add resources in several areas, uh, namely four additional full time positions in. Public Works and in the DSS through three separate funds. Uh, if approved, then second reading would be November 12th. So as introduction, uh, in the general fund, we're requesting uh, approximately $70,000 to invest in upgrades and additional IT technology that's been identified by our IT staff as uh, would bolster our security of our networks. And as we all know, um, that's been a, a very um, difficult issue nationwide, uh, lots of attacks on local government. So they have identified some uh, resources that they need to help strengthen um, our already uh, robust defenses, and we're requesting some funding for that. In addition, we're requesting four full-time positions, so one in the general fund, which is a programs and special projects manager that would be in our public works department. And that would be dedicated to special project and capital project needs for a variety of small and mid-level capital projects. So we've identified several uh, repairs to the pedestrian bridges over the canal, repairs to the aeration system in the canal, street lights on Fall Hill Avenue. Uh, we may also have this position working on special programs such as street cuts uh, so that would be one of the positions. We've identified two positions needed in our social services department, and they are to help with the foster care caseload, a family services specialist, and also to address basically all of the uh, case in, child, in foster care and child protective services, uh, the addition of a case aid position that would help with administrative intake uh, and take that burden off the... Uh, the workers. Um, in stormwater management, we have currently six full-time positions. We have two in our community planning and building department, and then four that were uh, previously and still are physically at the shop, or drainage crew. And we're asking for an additional environmental programs manager. Uh, this would be a little less focused on the regulatory aspects of stormwater and regulating private development and a little more focused on the city's infrastructure. So everything from the large stuff like Pond D uh, to uh, smaller culverts that need replacing, things like that. So this position would help in, in that area and also with educating and, and other aspects of our, uh, what we call our MS4 permit. 
Um, it is a, uh, a bit of a, an ask in terms of resources. The uh, total is 297,413, so approximately $300,000. And the four new positions are mid-year positions. We didn't ask for the full year, so you, you have a table in your packet that shows you the annualized cost of these positions. Um, we used general fund contingency for the general fund items in the amount of about $150,000, which would leave us about three fifty dollars left for the year. In the social services fund, uh, we can call on additional federal and state revenues to help pay for it, and the local share would be the social services fund balance. And the stormwater management um, position, we are suggesting that we use about $60,000 of that fund's fund balance. And with that, I do recognize that Mr. Fawcett and Mr. King are here and can answer questions about the general fund positions. Uh, I want to also thank Ms. Gallick and Ms. Uh, Jerome from Social Services. They can help answer any questions you may have about DSS. And I can also answer any questions you may have. Okay. Council Kelly. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Not, not any questions per se, but per the our last council meeting, everybody sees what great things are going on in, in Fredericksburg, and it takes people to take care of it. People expect these services. When we call the city employee, policeman, fireman, social service person is there to deal with it. And as we've grown, it's been more and more strain on our staff, and we've, we've talked about this numerous times. And I'm just hoping as we do move forward with the next budget cycle that we start focusing in on those basic needs that these employees of ours deal with. They don't really have a constituency. Everybody kind of expects them to be there when everybody picks up the phone, but they are a critically important part for the city. And before we go embarking on other big and bad projects, or good projects, I should say, um, I do think we need to start taking some time to really focus in on what our staff is being expected to do and what we might need to do to, one, make them more competitive and get the, the job done a, a lot easier than it is right now because there are a lot of stresses and strains with our staff right now. And with that, I'll move the resolution on our first three demanding the first year someone else. We have someone else who wishes okay. to speak. Sorry. Councilor Devine. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, agreed that I think we need to make sure we're covering the bases that sometimes are overlooked. And I think that these positions and um, monies that are going towards um, these areas really speak to our potential vulnerabilities, our IT, um, our stormwater management, our Rappahannock River, our environmental needs, and then obviously the vulnerability of the some of the smallest and most neediest among us, the, the foster children and foster families that um, step up to, you know, take care of, of those, those young ones. So um, uh, I absolutely agree with these, but I do think it's something we need to look long term and obviously we are um but these are going to be budget concerns or needs as we you know start looking at the budget through the new year so i am fully in support of them though council duffy thank you mayor i want to thank staff for bringing this amendment to us um serve, i always say serving in city council is only part of what we do serving on the commissions and boards is so much of what we do and to see firsthand the leadership of ms gallick and ms drone to try to keep together our social service department. Um, they are like first responders, uh, helping families um, in very difficult circumstances. I'm, I'm grateful for the leadership you guys provide, as well as the service that the department provides. And we've talked about the needs um, for more support, and I'm grateful we'll be able to do this now. Thank you. Thank you. And now. Madam Mayor, I'll move first read amend in the fiscal year 2020 budget to supplement resources for public works, social services, stormwater management, and information technology. Second. Um, all in favor, favor. say aye. <laughs> aye. That's right. I'll call upon Mr. Baruti for the city manager's update. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I do want to thank uh, Council for unanimously just supporting the, uh, the, the resolution you just passed. Uh, that means a lot. Obviously, we'll bring it back for a second read. Uh, we don't take lightly bringing these matters mid-fiscal year, uh, but we do feel an urgency, and I'm glad you're, you're responding well to that uh, urgency. Um, I, I do also want to me mention just quickly that uh, I do apologize the board's not working, but it is timely in that uh, we've already identified new software. Both Stafford and Spotsylvania are using um, a more high-tech uh, um, um, offering. We're going to do the same and bring that to you soon. Um, 
maybe even next meeting if we can accommodate that. Uh, again, sorry for the board being out, but uh, help is on the way. I do commend the city manager's update to your attention and uh, happy to take any questions if there are any. Any questions? In that case, go Nets. <laughs> we are adjourned. <laughs>